Hi. Hi. It's Rebecca. I eat books. I'm here to do a wrap up. It's the first week of September. Just got back from Labor Day weekend. I haven't done a wrap up in two months. So we have 20 books between July and August. We're gonna try to go really fast. So like a couple sentences a book. Do we think I can do it? Easier for some books than others. How are you guys? Missed you? Things have been wild over here. What have I been up to? I have done a lot of baking. Went to Queens to get a new tattoo. Ruby Stencil on Instagram did this. She's amazing. If you want a stick and poke done by an angel, you should check her out. I spent a weekend in Providence. My mail is being delivered. I think I just saw that my mailman had a book. Should we go check the mail together? Okay, one second. What do you guys think it is? W.W. W. Norton. I'm so excited. It's the wall. This book looks amazing. I sent an email about it to Brittany, who does publicity at New Directions, and she said it was her favorite book they've ever published. It has a afterword by Claire Louise Bennett that I read. It was published online. The blurbs are Doris Lessing and Nicole Cross. It looks amazing. Translated from Austrian. So excited. Okay, great. What were we talking about? Things I did since I've seen you last. Queens, a new tattoo. Providence. I went to DC for a weekend and hung out with my dad. Went to Western Mass. I went back to New York a second weekend and hung out with Lindsay. Went to the Met. Had my first ever tarot reading and aura reading. I went to Seattle for a few days and hung out with Julie, the linen librarian. Ben and Ohad, Ben Green, his partner Ohad were here. We had the best slumber party, drank wine, did face masks, played in my closet. It was so fun. And then for Labor Day weekend, I went up to Vermont, went canoe camping. We put all this stuff in the canoe. So set up camp, it was so fun with a bunch of my friends. Shout out to my boy, John, big fan of, of the channel. Love you, John. Yeah, things have been great. Oh, I got my ears pierced. I got second holes in my ears because I'm a badass. And I treated myself to really ridiculous fall winter boots. Do you love them? If you hate them, keep to yourself. If you love them, leave a comment. Really chunky, really say don't fuck with me. I love them. I think those are all my highlights. Do we actually talk about the books? Okay, let's talk about the books. July, let's go. Plant Dreaming Deep by May Sarton, amazing. Almost like a prequel to Journal of a Solitude, which is phenomenal. It's about her building the house in Nelson, New Hampshire. So good. I immediately bought a copy for my mother and had it sent to her. Talks about her garden, building her home. There's amazing photos of the home. I just keep talking about wanting to get a cabin in New England and doing what I call May Sarton cosplaying. Okay. That outfit right there, that could be me. She talks all about how much she loves her poppies in her garden. I ran out and ordered a bunch of seeds. I'm gonna have a really good May Sarton picking garden next summer. Usually I focus on vegetables. May Sarton talks about a good mix of vegetables and flowers so that she can have fresh flowers in her house every day. And I wanna do that. I deserve fresh flowers. Uh, the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I don't know if I would call this even a novella. It might just be a short story about the madness of a woman held captive by men and the patriarchy who don't believe in a woman's ability to understand her own brain. Boulder by Eva Balthazar. My favorite book I've read this year. I loved it. I cried actual tears. So good. We have an incredibly unlikable narrator. A mess works as a cook on boats, is running away from everything, including themselves. They fall in love with another woman. They try to settle down and have kids. Uh, everything comes crumbling down. It's so good and so hard. Please read it. Read it. Came out in August, I think. Okay, and then I read Delphi and Diary of a Film. If I don't have a book, it's because I, I brought them to Lindsay. When I met her in New York, I brought her a big bag of books. Definitely Boulder was in there, Delphi Diary of a Film. Anything I mentioned that I can't hold up, that's where it went, which means I probably liked it. Delphi and Diary of a Film. I preferred Delphi over Diary of a Film, although Delphi is really just Jenny Awful fan fiction, I would say. But if you're into that, I did a vlog where I read them both. Go watch it. Great. Trust. 
by Hernan Diaz. I really enjoyed it. Nothing like In the Distance, the Hernan Diaz Western. It is four retellings of the same story from different perspectives. Clever, it was fun, it went right by really fast for being a really big book. Parts of it could have been shorter, but it was great. It was fun. I liked it. It was a good time. Interesting take on form. It did interesting things with form. You think you've heard the form of a story being retold multiple times and you have, but this did it differently and I really appreciated it. The English Understand Wool. This is the new Helen DeWitt, author of the beloved Last Samurai. It was great. It was really short. Again, short story novella, hard to say the difference. Like The Last Samurai had a young person who's too clever for the world, who outsmarts everyone around them. It has a twist. It has much more of a twist than most books I read. It had a real twist. It twisted. It was great. It was classic Helen DeWitt, very fun. Part of a really beautiful New Directions publication. Aurelia, Aurelia. I loved this. This is Katherine Davis's memoir and it was given to me by Julie when I was in Seattle. Katherine Davis is an amazing writer. After reading this I was like I would do anything to be in her brain for 10 minutes. She wrote this little memoir. It's really small. It's a tiny but nothing is organized chronologically. It's organized around theme, pieces of artwork that have been meaningful in her life that reflect on that theme, anecdotes from her life that reflect on that theme. It felt like she was writing for herself to digest and reflect on those pieces. And if you're following along as a reader, then good for you, but it's not meant to be digested by you. It was written to be cathartic for her. Loved it. And I love a book that doesn't hold your hand or feel like it's written to a piece reader. I need to read more Katherine Davis now. I have not read any of her fiction. I'm sold. I read The High Road by Edna O'Brien. I gave all of these books to Lindsay. This was a beautiful, sapphic, tragic, unrequited love story with the most outrageous, heartbreaking final scene of any book I've ever read I think. Takes the cake for final scenes. It takes place in Spain. It has a lot of class consciousness themes. I really loved it. Felt like a precursor to Hot Milk almost by Deborah Levy. Uh, I read Tell Me How It Ends, an essay in 40 Questions by Valeria Luiselli. This was gifted to me by my friend Ashley, the social work bookworm. It was really wonderful. I love Luiselli. She always does really interesting things with form and she's at it again with this. Volunteering as a translator to children seeking asylum from South and Central America and Mexico. In order to be granted asylum, they have to respond to this 40 question questionnaire and she helps them answer it. The process is heartbreaking, the questions are heartbreaking, and it's just done really beautifully. And you can see how the Lost Children Archive really comes out of this book, even though this is nonfiction and Lost Children Archive is fiction. It's really interesting to see like companion works from authors in both genres, how they can mine similar content and create two pieces of work that are so different, but speak on similar themes. I loved this. Thank you, Ashley. I read Aftermath on Marriage and Separation by Rachel Cusk. It's fine. It's not Cusk's greatest work. If I'm going to read Cusk nonfiction, I would rather revisit a life's work. Or if I want to read a book about the madness of divorce, I would read Ferrante's Days of Abandonment. It was fine. We love Rachel. We, we don't have anything bad to say. And then I read... Rachel Kushner's The Hard Crowd. Rachel Kushner is a serious badass. This is nonfiction collection of essays. This woman has lived 90 lives. There's an insane opening essay about her years as a motorcycle racer, a badass motorcycle racer. Often essay collections can be uneven and this definitely suffers from that. There are just some that are better than others, but overall I loved it. I couldn't stop thinking about how I want to get a drink with this woman. There's an amazing essay where she goes to Gaza in the West Bank. She's done a lot. Okay, I think that was 12 books I read in July. Nine books that I read in August. So I read The Woman Who Killed the Fish. This is also part of that great release of the, with those beautiful covers of really small books out from New Directions. I also gave this to Lindsay. This is Clarice Lyspector and it's a collection of children's stories. They're so weird and so good, so precious, clearly for children, but they're not infantilizing. She is speaking in a way that shows that children can understand nuance and understand cleverness and silliness. You don't have to speak 
in short, direct sentences to children. They have creativity and imaginations. I love that. I really loved this book. A really fun way to spend an hour. I read it in the taxi on my the way home from the airport after I was in Seattle. The best. Perfect taxi ride. I read Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Finally. This book was not perfect for me. It's definitely plottier than my personal taste. It has a little bit of like a, a bow at the end, which I hate, but for the most part, I really enjoyed this book. This is a book that I talked a lot about, which is a good sign for me. I found the book pretty hot, kind of like exciting and exhilarating. It is about a community of trans people. We have a three main protagonists at the center of this book, a trans woman, a man who was previously a trans woman in detransitioned, and a cis woman. And they're coming together and sort of creating their own definition of family. I just found everything about the way that they rewrite the rules of everything to be really exciting. I think that sometimes when you hear the cis or alta narrative of trans people or gender queer people or just queer people in general, it's about taking the cis heteronorms and just applying them. This idea that like that person wants to be a boy in a hetero relationship. It's like Bitch, you're so far off. We are we are playing three-dimensional chess. We are so beyond your cis hetero ideal relationship. We are making our own rules and creating families, communities, lives, ways of being in the world, ways of feeling intimacy and ways of feeling pleasure that you can't even fathom. It was exciting and I didn't find it to be tokenizing or written for the cis gays in a way that was explaining things to me. As I was reading it, I was like, oh, I this is not a sentence that's written for me. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, not perfect, but great. And I would read definitely more Tori, more Tori Peters. Okay, then I read Sphinx by Anne Greta. This is translated from French. It's a love story between two characters written completely without gender. I think that in French, to write without gender is a huge undertaking because every word is gendered in a way that it's not true in English. And because of that, and the way that this rule had to navigate that, it reads very wordy to me. The reading experience was not my favorite. There's some weird plot choices that I found confusing. I really enjoyed the experience of the experiment, the thought experiment as I was reading it, trying to deny genderizing these characters and to allow myself to truly read it as genderless characters. The actual reading experience nothing to write home about. The translator's note was wonderful. I'm glad I read it. I wouldn't read it again. That was also lent to me by the social work bookworm. And then I read Death by Landscape by Elvia Wilk. I loved this. Lindsay gave this to me when I was in New York. She bought it for me. It's a wonderful essay collection. Elvia Wilk, also someone who I would love to spend an afternoon in her brain, very smart. The themes of this book are around the lack of boundary between self and environment, the way that we as a society have created these false boundaries separating ourselves and then called this separate human realm reality and anything that's written that blends these false boundaries to be science fiction and how a lot of science fiction is just honest exploration of the world around us. There were some really hot concepts in this book that I found to be exciting. The idea of erotic rot and the conversation around paradise rot, which I read and talked about earlier on this channel and loved. That's the Jenny Ball book. A lot of Anne Carson. Elvia is an Anne Carson stan. Especially Eros the Bittersweet. So much Eros in this book. This book persuaded me to read more science fiction. I'm gonna do it. If Elvia says so, then we gotta do it. Then I read Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett, finally. It's no pond but it's really good. I loved it. Nobody writes sentences like Claire Louise Bennett. So good. We have this main character. She is working as a checkout person at the register, at the 19th register at a grocery store. This book is unmoored and untied down to anything. We're in this woman's brain. She's all over the place. The only thing that really anchors her to her life in any sort of stable way is literature. In the books she reads, we talk, hear so much about literature. She talks a lot about Ferrante and so many books that I love. There is some sexual violence in this book that I didn't see coming that was hard to read, but I love this book. I had a great time with this. There's a part where she is talking about having her period. First of all, she describes it as globuliferous. 
She's so delicious. Then she talks about wanting to take her period blood to the cosmetics counter at the department store and have them find her a lipstick in that shade because it is the most perfect shade of red. How good is that? It's so good. I love you, Claire Louise Bennett. And then I read Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I think my friend actually said it's pronounced Taves. Ashley, is that what you said? I remember being surprised by how it was pronounced. This book is about a group of Mennonite women who realize they've been drugged and sexually abused in their sleep. They have two days while the men in their community are away and they need to decide if they should stay, fight, or leave. And these are sort of like the meeting notes from those two days based on a true story. I was hesitant to read this even though I've read Caves before and really loved what I've read. I was worried this would be like trauma porn, gratuitous, and it's not at all. This was like an incredibly hopeful book about women, intelligence, education, language, art, philosophy. It was a really contemplative book about choices that women face. In my 4K Q&A a couple months ago, somebody asked me about books about badass women. And this book definitely falls into that category for me of acknowledging that things are hard for women and is ultimately hopeful and optimistic. So I really, really loved this book. Then I read this short story or novella by Iris Murdoch called Something Special. I saw this at a bookstore, a used bookstore in Western Mass when I was hiking a few weekends ago. I'd never heard of it before. It's Iris Murdoch. And this is a great example of when someone who does something really good makes a conscious choice not to publish something in their lifetime and then posthumously somebody else publishes it and you're like, this is why Iris did not want this published. This is not Iris. It didn't read like Iris. It wasn't thrilling, morally dubious, and interesting like Iris. I mean, it wasn't offensive, but it was fine. I mean, and, and Iris is you aren't usually fine, so you have my permission to skip this. Two more. I read Love Me Tender by Constance Debray. This is semiotext, distributed by MAT Press, out at the end of September, translated from French. This is not Debray's first book translated in English. I think it's her second, although she has several in French. It was great. It's a fictionalized telling of Debray's own story of coming out late in life as a lesbian and leaving her husband and child and how the state in France really fought her for her parental rights and how her being an artist and a lesbian and kind of a general non-conforming woman kept her from her parental rights. Infuriating and is written in a fit of madness. You can feel the anger. Really good. And lastly, Girlhood by Melissa Fibos, also lent to me by the social work book where She's a good friend. I loved it. I love Phoebos. I read Body Work First, which is her more recent book, which is about writing and loved it, gobbled it up. And then I started this, which is more traditional memoir. The first couple essays are about her girlhood. She's very young and she experiences sexual violence at a really young age. And those were very hard to read. And I thought, I can't do this. I almost gave up. I can't read a whole book about childhood sexual violence. I can't do it. But it, it veers off of that. There is an essay all about the concept of slut and what the word slut is. The organization around that essay is so clever. She takes the story of Easy A, that movie that's like roughly based on Scarlet Letter. She takes the story she reports of somebody else's experience. She takes the story of her own experiences and she takes a the story, the plot of House of Mirth, weaves all of these different plots together. It's impossible not to see the recurring constant themes of men and society using terms like slut to brand women. And her overall thesis is that a slut is not a thing, a slut is not a woman, a slut is just a word that's been used as a tool to control women, used to control women for being dirty, for not being domestic enough, used to control women for not being docile enough. And then my favorite favorite essay in the collection is called Wild America. It's sort of about her body image, understanding her body as she grows up, how her relationships with men and women and her mother have all played a role in her relationship with her body and understanding her body. Also a book I have talked about so much, keeps coming up in conversation. Friends talk to me about things I say like, you know, that really reminds me of an essay from Girlhood. You should read it. So that's a good sign. Okay, I think we did it. I think that was 21 books.
Thanks for sticking it out. We went through that pretty quickly, I think. And I just read as my first September read is Mother Dead by Vigdis Horth. And I loved it, but we won't talk about it now. It's for next month. I love you nerds, you're the best. Let me know what I've missed in the past couple months. Tell me what you've read, tell me what you've done, tell me how you spent your Labor Day weekend. And most importantly, tell me if you love my new boots.